your orchids may be looking very poorly in a sorry state and you're wondering what to do with them here we'll teach you how to go about fixing your problems and bringing your orchids back to their full health good morning from the nature company today we're going to be teaching you a little bit about the problems you may have with your orchids especially with regards to fungal attacks we're going to show you how to identify what the different fungal problems are and how to treat them. So we'll start off with just identifying each different fungus and then watch all the way through to the end so you can see what the best forms of treatment are going to be. First we're going to start off with anthracnose. It generally starts at the tips of the leaves running backwards so you'll land up with a brown marks to light grey as it travels through the back of the leaf it can form this necrotic tissue as it infects the leaf. You see it's quite well defined, easy to identify. It can also start off as these concentric rings that will infect larger areas and it will cause it to drop off early. This disease is a common problem where your orchid's not getting enough light. We'll go through all the treatments just now. Next, another very problematic disease is Fusarium. Here you'll notice the purple coloration of the pseudobulbs, the wilting of the leaves even though it was originally green but you can start seeing it's wilting and not looking very healthy. One of the easiest ways to identify it is when you cut through the stem Remember sanitization, important, especially with dealing with diseases, we don't want to spread them. When cutting through the rhizome, you cut through the rhizome and you can notice these blackish, purplish rings around the outside of the rhizome. This is in the vascular system of the plant, so it's reducing the ability of the plant to transport moisture and nutrients up and down through the plant and that's why you get the wilting of the leaves and these leaves will eventually fall off and eventually your whole plant is going to die back. Um, in severe infections like this your plant may only last a few months up to about four months. In um, lesser infections it's just slowly going to decrease the vigor of your plant until eventually within a year or so your plant just curls up and dies. The best way to, to look after this now is to throw away all these infective pieces, keep cutting back until you no longer see the pink, purple or black ring in the tissue of the rhizome and then you'll treat that piece and throw away all the rest. Remember put it into the rubbish bin not into the compost heap because you don't want a chance of infecting the rest of your plants and this is spread mainly through poor sanitation so please remember keep your equipment well sanitized he has a 70 percent alcohol solution you can also use a flame whatever works easiest for you sanitization is important another very troublesome fungus is black rot. This is highly contagious. So unless it's a, a very important plant of yours or a high value plant, rather just throw it away because this is going to spread like wildfire through all your orchids. And it doesn't matter what type of orchid it is, it's going to attack. So this can be disastrous. If you want to save your orchid, the best way is to cut off the uninfected piece, treat it, keep it separate from any of, the other, of your other plants and get it growing again until you can see that it is free and clear. Okay now we're going to work our way through the leaf spots. These are all funguses which produce these ugly blotches and spots all over your leaves and you're not sure what to do with your plants. So now we're going to go through identifying them and teaching you how to treat them. So here we can see this has got purple blackish marks that lead up along the veins of the plant producing these diamond shapes 
and this almost light brown tannish color in the center. Here also you'll notice how they all seem to be along parallel lines along the veins. All these little triangular markings, diamond shapes with this tan coloring in the center. This tan coloring is then going to get little black spore heads on it and that's going to reinfect all your other plants. So this is Gennadia. But here we have the Phyllostricta. This is the same disease as the Gennadia, but different sexual phase. So, but here we can see the markings are rounder, more oval, and you'll notice how they go almost black with a thin center. It's, it's as if it's eaten away the center of the leaf, leaving these black marks. And this is just going to slowly spread through your plant, going to cause early leaf drop, and is very unsightly. It can also affect the pseudobulbs. So this you've got to look for. The initial phase is the small yellow sunken dots that will start to appear on your leaves and then you know treatment. So don't let this get out of control. Catch it early and you will not have to decimate your poor plants trying to get them back into good health. The other one is your Circospora. Here we see on the cattleya how it forms these small dots. It starts off at a, as a yellow dot on the underside of the leaf and quickly shows up on the top as a black spot and how it produces all these small black dots around it that slowly coalesce into larger irregular markings. Here too we can see starting off as the yellow dots as they increase into the bigger black dark spots and as they extend you can see this like yellow halo that seems to be around the outside this is just the disease spreading further infecting more of the leaf also going to cause early leaf drop and is unsightly on your plant and needs to be fixed for your plant to get back into to health and flower properly in the thicker leaves such as in the cattleya these dark spots eventually become necrotic and that's also easily an easy spot for for bacteria and such to to get in so we want to treat these these poor orchids before they killed the last common leaf spot is septoria this one also starts off as small yellow dots that appear either on the underside or on the top side of the leaf and then as they get older they age to these brown spots and then become these irregular markings and they also produce this yellowing that will spread across the leaf and cause early leaf drop. See how the leaf becomes soggy and mushy at the ends. Now that you can identify the problems with your plant, how to treat them and get them back into good health. Just before we go into treatment, I want to show you one more. Here we have these strange brown markings that have appeared on your leaf and you think, oh my goodness me, I have a fungus. What have I done wrong? What is going on? This is sunburn. This caught some sunlight either from a window or from getting some direct sun somewhere as the sun moves across. Nothing to worry about. It's just going to be uns unsightly. This is eventually going to go black and papery. Nothing you can do to fix it. If you don't like the look on the leaf, you can just cut it off and let the rest of your orchid take control or you can just leave it on until it will fall off by itself. This will allow still the extra space for the photosynthesis to happen around where the, the sunburn has happened and help your plant get back to its health as quickly as possible. Okay, on to treatment of your leaf spot. These you're all going to treat in much the same manner. Initially, we're going to remove 
all the old infected leaves. I know this can be leave your plant quite bare, but it's going to save it in the long run. So we're going to remove all the old infected leaves and then treat it with a systemic fungicide. So we're either going to use trifonate methyl, which is known as epoxiconazole in South Africa, or terbuconazole. So these are systemic fungicides. It's going to be drawn up into the plant and kill anything from the inside. It's, it will have a residual effect, so it will help protect your plants for a while. But again, after two weeks or so, we're going to treat it with a contact fungicide afterwards to spray the outside in case any other spores have um, germinated. And those we're going to either use a chlorothaninol or mancozeb. That's just to give your heavily infected plants a chance of recovering, keeping all the fungus away, killing it, making sure it doesn't reoccur. And to help prevent leaf spot from occurring on your plants, you need good sanitization, you need good air movement and reduced watering on the leaves. So if you can reduce your watering on the leaves and keep your air movement good, you should be relatively safe. But in areas where your climate makes your plant susceptible, you're going to have to use preventative treatments. Best to use some of the organic product, a lime sulfur. If you can't stand the scent of lime sulfur, then use something like a neem oil or paraffinic oil, something like that, just to reduce the occurrence of them during seasons where they will be susceptible. And note with your lime sulfur, it's going to help treat for thrips and mites as well, but don't then use an oil product soon afterwards. They're going to have a chemical reaction which is going to be phytotoxic and that's going to do just as much damage to your leaves as what the fungus is going to do. So give it at least 30 days after using a lime sulfate if you're going to be using any of the other oil products. You can still feed but don't treat. Okay now with your black rot again remember immediately as soon as you notice it it's spread up from the roots through your pseudobulbs and along your rhizome. Isolate it immediately if it's an important orchid or throw it away because this is going to spread like wildfire. If you need to save your orchid, cut off the uninfected plant and dip it into one of the systemic fungicide and plant it up separately in fresh media, fresh pot. Make sure all your equipment and your surfaces have been sanitized before and after and then keep it isolated until you can see that it's free of the disease and the new plant has taken root and is looking healthy again. With Fusarium, we're going to be cutting it back until we've only got part where you can see the vest system has no longer been infected. So just keep cutting back until you no longer see the, the pinkish or purplish tinge around the outer edge of the rhizome and then treat that remaining section with a systemic fungicide and throw the other pieces in the bin. With all your infected parts of plants that you're dealing with, throw them in the bin, don't put them into the compost heap so that you can lessen your chance of reoccurrence of the diseases. With your anthracnose also remove infected parts of the leaves and use a systemic fungicide. Again, after two weeks, use a contact fungicide and you should be mostly free. But as again, in areas where you find you susceptible, prevention is better than cure. Okay, prevention is better than cure when it comes to fungus. So preventative measures, if you can stand the smell, lime sulfur is a good product to use. It can be quite hectic on the nose. So this will help with thrips and mites as well as being a preventative measure for fungus. The neem oil and the paraffinic oil are also a good product to use as preventative measures. It helps disrupt the fungal uh, sporing bodies and reducing the spread of the disease. And if you have already got an infection and you need to start curing your plants, then he has just two of the products. Aureus is the terbuconazole. In the US, these are elite aureus 
and Turbazol. In South Africa, it's the Aureus, Follicure, and Lynx. One of the contact ones is the Chlorothalonil. This is banned in the EU. Available in the US under the names Bravo, Echo, and Deconol. In South Africa, we use Odeon, Bravo, and Matrix. And the Thiophanate, Methyl, in, the, in South Africa is known as Epoxyconazole. These, this is found in South Africa under the name the product name Opus and in the US the products are OHP 6672 or 3336 or Spectro. So these are just some of the products in your arsenal to get rid of the fungus. But remember, fungi have the ability to become immune to the fungicides. So please rotate your fungicidal use. So if you're using one product, try and rotate between three different ones so that you make sure that you get, you've gotten rid of all the fungus so that by the time you get back to using the initial product again, there's none that have been able to survive it and will learn to survive through your spraying. So sanitization, ensuring your orchids have the best possible growing condition, ensuring correct lighting, good air movement, correct watering. Temperature can play a really important part in the proliferation of fungus in your orchids. Uh, Anthracnose prefers higher temperatures with good humidity and lower light levels. So if you're able to increase your light levels, putting them in a, a spot where there's going to be more air movement that will help keep the temperatures lower, you should be able to treat it more easily and avoid it infecting your plants. And Gennadia. Gennadia, if you are able to manage the light conditions of your plants, generally they'll have, it, it's a sign that the light is, conditions are too low. So try and move your plants to brighter light conditions, which will reduce the infection rate of the fungus. So just a few tips and tricks to help you keep your orchids in tip-top condition keep them blooming, flowering, making you happy. I hope you have great success treating your orchids and they bloom magnificently for you. Thank you for watching. Please, if you found this instructive, hit the like button, share with your friends, anyone who's having a problem, perhaps this can help them solve it. Comment below if, I, if I've missed anything out or you feel you have some input. If you need any further deeper input on this, please go to our Facebook page or Instagram and perhaps I can help you further there. And remember, sanitize your equipment. You don't want to spread your fungus into uninfected plants.